<laughs> no, no Catalan. Uh, is there any English people in the world? Yeah? Ah, okay. Then English. Uh, okay, thank you very much to the organizers and uh, not uh, so grateful to speak after uh, Ibsa Jit. It is always, uh, uh, he's a showman, but uh, well, I will do my best. Uh, first, I have to disclose that I am a clinician, uh, really biased uh, with some uh, basic uh, environment, uh, especially at my present position, and then I will give a clinician point of view, and uh, of course, I am not going to talk about each point that is now at the edge uh, of the research in Parkinson's disease, but uh, just two uh, key ideas uh, to begin. Uh, there are two key areas of research. Uh, first, uh, research exploring specific therapeutic approaches uh, that could contribute to the development of improved uh, therapies and research to develop tools and resources that will help accelerate the uh, development of uh, PD treatment. Puedo tener la presentación aquí, en la pantalla está de aquí. Uh, then, uh, thank you to Yves Ajit because he talked about this and uh, uh, I, I'm not going to repeat which is the classic concept of uh, Parkinson's disease, but of course I agree that uh, this is not entirely true, but uh, clinicians still are working with this idea and this is very important to keep in mind that are not lies, are the present times with patients. But, uh, from the research point of view, uh, we have a very biased view limited to uh, dopaminergic uh, pathology. And uh, of course, nowadays, uh, Parkinson's disease should be taken as a progressive multi organ disease uh, with uh, a lot of uh, motor and non motor deficiencies and a multifocal involvement of the central, the peripheral, and the autonomic uh, nervous system. And that, that is associated with the widespread occurrence, not only in the brain, of uh, Lewy bodies, dystrophic uh, Lewy neurites, and uh, this is, of course, resulting from uh, deposition of abnormal alpha synuclein. But this is not entirely true as we have uh, heard. And of course, we can also delineate uh, a presymptomatic, an initial, an intermediate, and uh, we can discuss with this ad an advanced phase of Parkinson's disease. But uh, the newcomers in this uh, play are the non-motor symptoms that often develop before the motor symptoms and presently can be markers of uh, the disease as the disturber, the sleep REM uh, behavior disorder, disorder, anosmia, depression, and also cognitive function. And of course, uh, it is a neuropsychiatric disorder, as uh, Eve said, and uh, the interplay uh, of dopamine, noradrenaline, serotonin, and acetyl, acetylcholine is uh, very important. Uh, he also uh, made reference about the uh, genetics, and presently uh, it is no more a sporadic disease, but it is uh, um, a very frequent disease with some causal genes that we have here, uh, a list that is not the last one, uh, and also with many uh, genes that are modifiers of the disease. And this is perhaps just the beginning of a long journey because uh, this is a very recent uh, new discovered gene, the DNA uh, JC13 uh, mutation. And it is uh, important because it, the phenotype is uh, absolutely similar to sporadic Parkinson's disease, such as uh, it occurs with uh, LARC2, but uh, it is striking uh, similar to uh, the phenotype of uh, um, sporadic Parkinson's disease, and of course, uh, the, this newly discovered gene mutation would be important for the development of uh, pathophysiological model and translational research, but also, the susceptibility genes that act in the sporadic uh, disease are more and more important. And uh, one 
of these and uh, that deserves a lot of uh, research is the GBA uh, mutation. It increased the risk not only for Parkinson's disease but also for Lewy body uh, disease with and without Alzheimer's disease. And this is uh, very important to, to take to in, in mind as um, individual genes, uh, if we are going to a more personalized uh, medicine, uh, individual genes may exert different effects over different domains of the disease, uh, cognitive or motor, and on different stages of the disease. And one example is that uh, the GBA gene is not only a risk factor for having Parkinson's disease or Lewy body, uh, disease, but also if you have this gene and Parkinson's disease, you have more risk to have dementia in Parkinson's disease. And the same is true with the MAPT haplotype H1 that not only confers risk of Parkinson's disease, but also confers a uh, risk of uh, a cognitive problem along the course of the disease. Then the opposite may be true, and you have also to identify benign genes and one traditional benign gene, and we can also talk about tradition in these few years that we uh, realize that, that PD may be a genetic disease, is LARC2, uh, because if I have to uh, select one gene for my Parkinson's disease, I will select uh, LARC2. Uh, no association with cognitive impairment, this is very important, but uh, this is a recent, a recent paper, uh, there is lower cognitive performance in mutation carriers. That is, the gene is not conveying perhaps an increased risk of dementia, but it still, as Parkinson's disease does, confers increased risk of cognitive impairment. And this distinction is very important from a clinical point of view because Parkinson's disease has inherent to the disease cognitive dysfunction, but this dysfunction is mainly, at least in early stages, of the frontal type and perhaps the influence of uh, other genes that are modifiers or other factors uh, go to a more malign form of cognitive disorder that can be identified from the very beginning in many cases, and this is the importance to identify posterior cortical signs in opposition to the classic uh, frontal executive impairment. That is, a lot of research can, uh, can be made uh, along this pathway, and uh, importantly, neuropsychological deficits uh, could be added to these uh, commonly accepted uh, markers uh, or probably markers of the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease. Another uh, area of uh, interest is this uh, overlap between uh, diseases and between Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and the Lewy body disease spectrum. And there is a growing body of clinical and pathological evidence that supports the notion that these three disorders may be different members of the same continuum. And in this sense, this is an, a paper from the uh, hospital clinic uh, uh, for Jaroslaw Comte, but it was made uh, with Andrew Lees. And uh, what is more important uh, for dementia in Parkinson's disease to have more uh, Alzheimer's disease type pathology that appears in most of the cases or just uh, alpha-synuclein? And perhaps uh, uh, my friend Comte say, well, uh, Alzheimer's disease is very important, but also uh, there is evidence that uh, cortical Lewy body are enough to have uh, Parkinson's disease dementia, but still there is an interplay and a dialogue between the two diseases, and there are very few brains that have only uh, tau uh, in Alzheimer's disease or only alpha-synuclein uh, deposition in demented patients with Parkinson's disease. And a newcomer to this uh, play, at least in Parkinson's disease, is that markers, the same markers that we were talking about uh, this morning, 
may be important for uh, dementia or cognitive impairment in Parkinson's disease, and these are uh, levels of tau protein, the index tau protein beta amyloid 142, and they are altered in this order in the same sense as it occurs in Alzheimer's disease, less in Parkinson's disease, more in PD dementia, more in dementia of Lewy body, and more in Alzheimer's disease, but there is a continuum, and uh, perhaps uh, the CSF of these patients show similar changes as that in Alzheimer's disease, but at least in these studies, these uh, changes do not reach uh, statistical significance. This is a very important um, uh, issue, that is, are we going to go, as uh, the Alzheimer's uh, people go, to uh, make uh, lumbar punctures in our patient to identify biomarkers? Uh, perhaps we are going to go uh, this way. Is there a biomarker signature for the possible recognition of prodromal PD, that is PD before the motor symptoms, similar to what is being uh, pursued with uh, AD biomarkers? And importantly, uh, are these uh, biomarkers useful for the assessment of uh, heterogeneous disease progression and to make prognosis to our patients with Parkinson's disease? For instance, could we define different motor trajectories with this? And uh, there are some preliminary um, uh, papers, but this is a very important paper, the first report of the um, PPMI uh, cohorts, and uh, these are drug-naive patients with early-stage PD, and the levels of AD-related CSF uh, biomarkers are significantly lower than those in uh, healthy controls. That is, uh, this is a very important point, and also that uh, A-beta-142 uh, and phosphorylated tau are significant predictors of Parkinson's disease uh, in a multivariate uh, logistic regression model. I have no time to enter into this important paper, but the other striking thing is that the same markers were useful to uh, determine that patients with uh, these uh, alterations in the biomarkers are more likely to have the PIGD uh, phenotype that uh, is uh, a malign phenotype in Parkinson's disease that means more actual symptoms, and we have heard from uh, Ips that uh, cognition is included into these actual symptoms. And uh, this is not the only one. This is also a very recent uh, paper from the group of the X group of uh, Arsland, now uh, with the Albus, that uh, T tau and alpha synuclein are associated with the uh, presentation of PIGD type versus the uh, tremor dominant type. That is, we can begin to delineate a more personalized pronostic or perhaps a guide to treat uh, differently uh, our patients. But uh, as I must use the word or the phrase state of the art, presently this is only research. and. Neither biomarker had an area under the curve uh, that is enough for making a PD diagnosis, but the new avenues are the combination of other biomarkers, including a limitation of this paper that have no look, for instance, for uh, CSF or plasma levels of DJ1 that can be, as we are going to see, protectors. That is, uh, Parkinson's disease is a complex uh, disease with uh, an interaction between genetic and environmental factors, and I recommend you to take an apple a day from Girona uh, that uh, are uh, good, uh, uh, have a very high content of flavonoids, and uh, perhaps they can modify the presence of uh, the genetic uh, background of uh, our uh, patients or and of ourselves. But uh, besides genetic factors, perhaps we are drawing a profile of practices associated with decreased or increased incidence of PD, 
physical exercise, smoking, caffeine, flavonoid, and a recent newcomer that is important, that is uh, for those of you who have to take statins, uh, a good news is that uh, there is a potential added advantage of uh, having less uh, Parkinson's disease, what at least delay the presentation of the disease. But more important than this anecdotal or important uh, report is that uh, statins lower intramitochondrial ionized calcium. And uh, this is uh, just a point that I want to, uh, to develop because as we also have heard here, uh, aging uh, might uh, facilitate Parkinson's disease because this is the main ambiental factor to have, or risk factor to have Parkinson's disease that is getting older. And it might facilitate PD by awakening uh, mitochondria and reducing neurons' ability to uh, uh, dispose of harmful uh, alpha-synuclein aggregates. And then mitochondria comes into play, and if I have to put my money into something new, uh, this, uh, you all know that mitochondria is not new in Parkinson's disease, but uh, as uh, many uh, ways uh, conduce to uh, Rome, uh, there's a lot of uh, paths uh, go to the mitochondria. And uh, I have no time to explain you all the importance, for instance, uh, PARC2, that is the parking gene in per mitochondrial ubiquitination aggregation and mitophagy, that is the PARC2 mutations greatly affect uh, mitochondrial homeostasis. PINK1 also is a regulatory kinase which selectively recruits this E3 ligase to dysfunctional mitochondria, and both for instance, uh, PARC2 and PINK1 and perhaps DJ1 forms a complex that uh, some uh, call the, the PD complex. Um, and uh, if we can uh, add other genes that act on mitochondria, we can delineate a large number of mutations in the encoding genes that are associated with uh, PD. And molecules that activate but do not hyperactivate parking or increase pink one activity that interacts with uh, parking might open new avenues for uh, PD uh, therapeutics. And uh, one example of this is also this very recent uh, article in which a neosubstrate that amplifies pink one activity has been recently reported. It is uh, called kinetin that amplify pink one activity in cell size with concomitant increase of parking recruitment and decreased cell death. And uh, it is interesting that kinetin is a molecule long time used as the basis for anti-wrinkle cream. And then uh, those of you who use anti-wrinkle creams just look for a kinetin among the components and uh, it, uh, kinetin and kinetin 3-phosphate already have uh, approved by the FDA and don't cause uh, adverse reactions in humans. And then this should both speed up and simplify the process leading to clinical trials. And the main uh, or the philosophical uh, stone is uh, neuroprotection. And uh, we all know what is... Uh, uh, a lot of difficulties in defining and measuring neuroprotection in humans, no validated subrogate mar markers, neuroimaging studies with uh, confusion factors, and long-term studies are required to prove benefit. And one of the main um, problems that we have with uh, previous studies is just to uh, make uh, a proof of concept in, of, our, of the candidate drugs in the wrong patients or in the wrong samples. And if we have to wait for so many years to prove neuroprotection with so many confounding factors, perhaps in the next trials uh, we are going to select 
uh, genetic determined patients or patients who have axial symptoms uh, such as uh, gait, posture, or cognitive problems that evolve more rapidly than other motor features of uh, Parkinson's disease and perhaps uh, take other uh, endpoints such as uh, dyskinesias, axial symptoms, postural instability, or dementia. But in the uh, meantime, we have to design the new candidates, and this is really a, a problem because you all have the myriad of uh, candidate metabolic pathway, uh, pathways, uh, inflammation, genetics, etc. And uh, the problem is that previous drug screens aiming to identify disease-modifying compounds for Parkinson's disease have typically been based on toxin induced in vitro and in vivo models, and all these compounds, and I'm not going to show the list, uh, but it, believe me, it is a huge list, have failed to have a reliable disease-modifying uh, effect in subsequent uh, clinical trials. And perhaps future drug screens may be preceded by in silica screens and genetics, and mitochondria perhaps has a long uh, uh, many things to do, for instance, assessing compounds for their likely effect on enhancing the biological activity of proteins such as parking or pink one, and uh, to think about the potential rescue effect of pharmacological compounds in model systems of early onset. And this is not uh, uh, fiction science. For instance, uh, vitamin K acts as a mitochondrial electron carrier that rescues uh, mitochondrial dysfunction in pink one uh, deficient uh, drosophila model of PD. Rapamycin and the LAR2 inhibitor GY5074 reduces the, produc the production of mitochondrial reactive oxygen, oxygen species in pink one mutant neuron cells uh, exposed to, to toxics. And uh, uh, this is a very recent novel approach, just uh, uh, yesterday in brain. Uh, and the approach is to screen an entire compound library directly in patient tissue to identify compounds with a risky effect on mitochondrial dysfunction as a crucial uh, pathogenic mechanism in Parkinson's disease. And they explore uh, a, a huge battery of uh, compounds, uh, uh, 2,000 initial compounds, and uh, they proved them into models of uh, parking deficit neuronal models and in LARC to uh, mutant fibroblast. And they select of these 2,000 only two that has the better uh, uh, action in this, uh, in this model, and uh, uh, uroscolanic acid uh, rescues mitochondrial function in both models. I'm not going to enter in detail, but uh, this is very important because it is going to change our approach. And if I have, if I would have uh, money to put, perhaps uh, I will design a platform to study candidates drag with this uh, genetic approach and which uh, these uh, candidates. Because the classical compounds that uh, patients and clinicians were expecting to come from these, uh, a lot of uh, uh, candidates to come to the market, and this is uh, um, preclinical, uh, clinical, phase one, phase two, phase three, etc most of them are not going to come to the market because of a typical biochemical approach. And we were designing, for instance, uh, glutamate receptor antagonist failed in phase three, AMPA receptor antagonist failed in phase three, uh, five HT receptor ag antagonist, agonists such as uh, pimavanserin failed recently in phase three. Uh, adenosine A2A receptor antagonist, proladenin, tosadenin, both failed in phase three this year. Alpha adrenal receptor antagonist, fipamisol, failed in phase three. From all these huge cartoon and BC cartoon, 
only safinamide and perhaps other uh, drug is going or perhaps is going to come to the market and I assure you that it will not be the revolution. Of course, other approach such as uh, targeting the substantia na nigra with uh, uh, growth factor, for instance, uh, also has been aborted due to inefficacy. And then it is time also to think about our models and uh, genetic mouse models that uh, the classical one that destroy dopaminergic neurons are not adequate models, for instance, for cognitive deficits of Parkinson's disease or to test uh, neuroprotection candidates. And as an alternative to toxins, newer animal models have or are utilizing a genetic knockout and knocking technologies. But one of the major drawbacks of the old models and also of the new models is that uh, they are not very uh, coherent or consistent in dopaminergic nigral loss. And then it is the case with uh, the alpha synuclein mouse models, only this one, A53T transgenic, exhibit a full range of pathology, including alpha synuclein aggregation, but these mice do not show a loss of substantia nigra dopaminergic deficit, in spite that it has a motor deficit. Pink one and DJ one have little utility outside of uh, basic research because no loss of dopaminergic neurons. Mouse models of LARC2 have so far failed to produce uh, degeneration of dopaminergic neurons in spite that there is a, a recent uh, paper showing uh, mm, all this uh, problem that uh, uh, recapitulate cardinal features of Parkinson's disease, but if you read with attention, no neuronal loss in substantia nigra. That is, there are no perfect models, and uh, perhaps the most interesting and perhaps most faithful mouse model for PD, uh, ironically, does not involve a known genetic mutation in the human condition, and is the mitopark mouse model, it is produced by deleting the gene for the mitochondrial transcription factor TFAM, which plays a critical role in maintaining uh, mitochondrial DNA. And it striking recapitulates the clinical PD pathogenesis, including the uh, basic or cardinal uh, features of an, uh, uh, an animal model, uh, presence of intraneural inclusions, uh, adult onset of neuron uh, degeneration, progressive decline in uh, motor function, responsive to levodopa, and interestingly, this is also August 2013, uh, in this model, cognitive dysfunction may precede the onset of uh, motor symptoms, and then it can be used uh, or at least tested uh, to look for uh, new uh, candidate compounds to treat mild cognitive impairment in Parkinson's disease. That is a new avenue of research, very important and supported by the Movement Disorder Society. And first, when we talk about research, it's not only a matter of designing new drugs. Thereafter, you have to use these drugs in real people, and the FDA does not accept a condition that is not accepted by uh, the general uh, doctors in the sense that they can say, well, what is mild cognitive impairment in Parkinson's disease? And how are you going to measure the effect of a drug? Do you have appropriate scales? And then this is also a very important area of uh, research. And of course, I am not going to finish to s uh, talk about alpha-synuclein. Michael Biller is going to talk uh, tomorrow. I have talked about biomarkers. Uh, cognition will deserve uh, a, a separate uh, lecture. Dyskinesia imaging is going to be uh, treated by uh, Dr. Brooks. Uh, LARC2. Uh, it's a compelling drug target uh, giving a strong genetic link to PD and also deserves uh, more 
uh, attention, neurotrophic factors, stem cells, and of course, more uh, candidates in the pipeline. But my final message is that as we are looking to translate better, a better understanding of bas basic neuroscience into clinical interventions, neurologists will be very critical to these uh, new efforts because uh, the interpretation of what is the clinical needs, what is the clinical pathway, and what is the uh, basic research is uh, very important to uh, manage in conjunction, in conjunction, and I think that CyberNet is a very, very a great initiative just to do uh, this. And thank you again to the organizers. Muchas gracias, Jaime. Aunque eh, vamos un, nada un pelín tarde, alguna pregunta o comentario, doctor Kulisewski. Eh, González Castaño está ya al final. Espera, 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 que no se te oye. I was surprised that you mentioned the different model, nice model as a good model for PD because actually it aggregates protein inside, but it's not synuclein. If I've understood correctly that, that model. So it's known the protein that gets aggregated in that uh, mice model of PD, where cells die and everything? Uh, well, I think uh, that I, I began just uh, acknowledging that there is no a perfect model. And uh, also the mice, uh, mice is not the perfect one. And we have a lot of, uh, but uh, it is interesting to uh, take this model in the sense that uh, we need, for instance, uh, a cognitive model. And perhaps my point was just to, to take this, but perhaps we are going to perfectionate our use of the different models just for different um, uh, research. But Trini. Hola, hola. Thank you, Jaime. Uh, yes, I, I would like to, to point out in relation to the models in Parkinsonism. And I think that uh, genetic models, even if there is not a cell death in the Sustantia nigra, are important because uh, the importance of the model is what are you asking? Which, which question are you asking? And maybe in these models, we can treat with uh, some toxin and PTP or whatever. And in fact, is the real thing that you miss genetic and epigenetic problems. On the other hand, there is other models that develop uh, amyloid deposits with age and not only develop these amyloid deposits with age in the brain, but as well, they develop cognitive deficits. And uh, we are trying to do it this with MPTP in order to see, and we have already some results. Because I, I agree with you, something that is important is the mental dysfunction in, in the progression of Parkinson's disease. the wall. Can you hear me? Um, of course, I, I completely agree with you. And uh, my view is just there is no perfect model nowadays. And we can use the different models to ask different questions. And perhaps the better model is that the, the model adequates to solve the question that you are asking for. This is my, my view. And of course, we are still using the cis hydroxy, the six hydroxy dopamine model. Why not? I forget one thing more. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really worried because we are doing generally all the studies in young animals. And in fact, 
mostly of the patients are not young people, are more than 50, then maybe the way, and as, as we are doing, is to analyze and do the experiments in aging and aged animals as well, to, to take in, in account the aging problems, the physiological aging problems. I agree. Well, perhaps one of the problems in relation with um, um, models, transgenic models and other models, is not exactly the model, but rather the lack of human substantia nigra models. Yeah. So, because what is different is substantia nigra in, in humans in relation with other mammals and particularly in rodents. What do you think about that? Yeah, perhaps uh, this is the fundamental question because we are not going to have never a model of substantia nigra dead in rodents because there are fundamental differences between species and then it is an utopy, I don't, I'm not sure what this is uh, the right word, uh, just to expect that you are going to have uh, a dopaminergic lesion in the Nigra model. And then uh, this is why, uh, at least for uh, my point was, for new drugs, perhaps the approach is not to have the mice, the animal and the model, but to derive new drugs for a new proof of concept from these uh, cell cultures of uh, candidate uh, mutations and different uh, metabolic uh, combinations of this and uh, this approach of the recent paper of BRAIN, uh, I like uh, very much. But uh, of course, uh, this is the lecture that I would like to hear, not to give, because uh, I have no the answers, and I just uh, made a personal view that is entirely subjective. 